I know for me, when I first started, I really wanted everybody at work to be this complete masterpiece. And the truth is everything, even now, is a learning lesson. Some bodies of work are, you know, the thing that we exhibit and the thing that gets us a lot of attention and some are a bridge or even an idea for a future body of work. And it's all super, super important. Hello beautiful soul and welcome to this video in which I want to talk to you about creating freedom and magic in the studio. So for those of you who know my story, I've been exhibiting my art for over 10 years and I learned so much on this journey. But when it comes to being an artist, what's really important to me is making sure that I'm honoring my values. My values, I will share them with you, are freedom, creativity, abundance, community, and beauty. Not necessarily in any order. But sometimes when we are on this path of being a professional artist and doing our part in reaching our goals, applying opportunities, working with other people such as galleries, dealers, curators, we sometimes get a little bit caught up in that climb and we forget to honor our creativity. So to me, it's so important to check in with myself once in a while and just ask myself, am I doing this because I truly want to? Is this bringing me joy? Is this aligning with my values and my goals? Or do I feel pressured and feel like I have to do it because other people have asked me or this is the only way that I can experience success? And so for a long time, my work has been about interiors and I still very much love the subject matter. So it's not to say that I'm never painting an interior again, but once every few months or years, I remind myself of why I do what I do. To me, creativity is this really mysterious realm where I get to connect with myself, connect with the world, and connect with the universe or God, right? Through creativity. So I love to listen to music, get lost, get surprised by my work. And sometimes when we are working for deadlines or we're working for other people or entities, some of that magic can feel like it's been a little bit lost or diluted and that's okay. So I wanna share some tips with you to reclaim your creativity and start experiencing more magic and beauty and freedom in the studio. The first thing is, even if you are working on major deadlines, how can you give yourself a little bit more freedom right now? Maybe it's committing to a 20 minute sketchbook practice, or maybe it's having a side body of work that's just for you, so you can really act on those creative ideas and explore some of those thoughts that you've been having. Or maybe you keep seeing something you really wanna create, but it just doesn't fit into your current goals and deadlines. How can you give yourself a little bit more freedom so that you don't feel trapped and you don't feel like you're constantly working for someone else? The other tip I wanna give you is to be really mindful when saying yes to future opportunities. Opportunities. In the moment, it may feel really exciting to say yes to an exhibition down the line and overbook yourself and continue to say yes, 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 yes. But I want you to practice pausing and just checking in with your body, making sure that this opportunity is a hell yes for you and not something you're doing because you have to or it's good for your career, okay? Because as you get older, have more experience and experience more and more success, you're gonna have more opportunities in time and you're gonna have to learn to curate them anyway. So why not start now and why not start trusting yourself with what's best for you? I know for me at the beginning, I would literally say yes to everything, anything from a local show to anywhere I had to ship my work and that was great and that served me during that season of my life. But as I'm getting older, my time is becoming more and more precious to me and I don't have unlimited time as I might have had in the past. Well, I would argue I never had unlimited time, but it seems that way. It seems like you're willing to do anything for that success. And the truth is, is that our time is our most valuable resource. We have to be wildly protective of it. The next tip I wanna give you is to recognize that not every body of work you're gonna create is gonna be you know, the best seller or the smashing success. Whenever I listen to interviews or hear speakers, authors, leaders, artists talk about their journey, a lot of times 
we see the tip of the iceberg of their career path. But in reality, they're putting in hours and hours experiencing failures, projects that didn't go anywhere. And especially when you listen to interviews with famous authors, they might have published maybe five to 10 books before they get that bestseller. And the truth is you have to love the process and you have to be in love with what you do even if this specific series isn't going to take you somewhere. So for example, giving yourself the freedom to explore a new subject, learn a new skill, even take a workshop from someone you admire in an area that you're not super proficient in can really open up those creative channels for you. I know for me, when I first started, I really wanted everybody at work to be this complete masterpiece. And the truth is everything, even now, is a learning lesson. Some bodies of work are, you know, the thing that we exhibit and the thing that gets us a lot of attention and some are a bridge or even an idea for a future body of work. And it's all super, super important. So because we see a lot of highlight reels on social media and we see a lot of perfectly packaged, curated things, we don't see that messy behind the scenes that a lot of creatives have to deal with. Every creative experience is this, whether you're a writer, maybe you're a content creator, or you are an artist or a photographer, you're gonna have like tons of content that's just not your best work, and but that's exactly how you get to the best work. So my friend, I encourage you to journal and think about what are some ways that you would like to feel in the studio going forward? What are some new works that you like to explore that you haven't given yourself a chance to? Maybe there's some limiting beliefs such as I'm not good enough or I don't know how to do that. There's so many other people doing this. Catch yourself when you start thinking those thoughts and see if you can question some of them. Question the validity and the truth behind some of these limiting beliefs and thoughts and then give yourself the permission to make something messy, make something terrible and imperfect and act on your ideas and dreams. Right now, as you can see behind me, I am really exploring something brand new, something that I love and I've loved for a long time. In fact, I've made a previous series when I first graduated about the ocean and it was actually mixed with bedrooms. It was a super weird, surrealist series. Um, but I look back to, I'm so glad that I did it. It didn't really go anywhere. I didn't get it accepted into many exhibitions. I think I had one show with this series, but the truth is I had no idea that all these years later, this theme of the ocean, this theme of water and the healing properties of it would come back and inspire me one more time. Not only have I been exploring water, but one of my dear friends and former clients, Victoria Fry, recently invited me to participate in an exhibition that she's curating in New York City. And in the future videos, which you will see, I have been painting snow, I've been painting fire and water, and this work behind me now is an exploration of images I took when I was on a residency in Greece. And so sometimes we don't even realize that we already have the reference photos, the sketches, the material we need to create that idea that's been sort of whispering or even maybe yelling at us for a long time. So I wanted to give you a peek behind the scenes of my transitionary period. It's a little bit vulnerable because I don't have a polished product yet. I don't have a body of work to show you, but I want to be an example of someone who truly follows her ideas, isn't a slave to something that might have worked before, and also allow myself and others in my community to give ourselves that permission to explore, to play, to push our work to new heights. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the next few clips of my recent explorations of paintings of nature. These are larger scale, really expressive and very textured. I used a lot of palette knives in these and I had a ton of fun making them. And maybe if you see this video before April, 2023, I might see you in New York City at our pop-up.